Let's try there we that. Go. I don't have an eye clock. Hey, Abby. How's your hand? Let's see okay. the stitches. Oh, yeah. Let's see your stitches. She got them taped over right now. She got them taped oh, over right taped now. Up. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, don't All, right. All right, mine's. My end says it's recording, Lisa. Okay. It says recording I, at the top of mine. Okay. Okay. It does, oh, okay. It does say oh, I see it too. So we'll okay. see who's it saves on. Oh, yeah. Who, ears or mine. Right. <laughs> who knows? It who knows? says it's recording to the cloud, but I don't even know I if I have it. a cloud account. So. I see it now. Okay. <laughs> All right. And Joe supporting VBS. Way to go, Joe. So. Uh, <laughs> All right, let me just go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to have a word of prayer real quick, uh, and then we'll just go through some things. Father God, uh, we are excited to get back to church. We're excited to see one another face-to-face. -face. We're excited uh, to be able to worship you together uh, corporately. Uh, but, Father, we know that that comes with risk. And um, so, Father, we're taking every step we can to be uh, responsible to minimize any risk that would be to any body who would come. And Lord, uh, these greeters play a huge role in that uh, over these next eight weeks or so. And so Father, help us tonight uh, just to lay out a plan um, that would be both uh, effective, but also efficient. And um, Father, just help us uh, as we come together Sunday to help things uh, to run smoother. And um, so thank you for that. Thank you for these people that are here and the other ones that will watch this video later. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let me just start by saying this. Uh, over the last 10 weeks, uh, Cole Duke has probably been the MVP of our church. Uh, because without Cole Duke, uh, you guys would not have had anything to watch online. Um, and I see that as providential uh, because it wasn't too long ago that we actually brought Cole on as an intern and had we not done that or had somebody who was already learning Final Cut Pro uh, we really would have been behind the eight ball these last 10 weeks. Now I say that because in the next eight weeks uh, the greeter ministry is going to be the MVPs of our church um, because it's going to be you guys uh, that are helping everybody get where they need to be the way they need to be um, so that everybody can be uh, safe um, and as safe as possible. Um, now, y'all need to know, and in fact, I mentioned it today in my devotional, uh, we're actually having the church sprayed uh, with a commercial uh, thing that kills all bacteria and kills it for like 30 days and all of this kind of stuff. And so uh, that's actually getting done tomorrow. Um, and so we've taken a lot of precautions. Uh, we're going to have sanitizing stations. We're going to have hand soap stations. Uh, we've got uh, a few of the cheaper face masks. If somebody feels like they need one, we've got individual uh, sanitizers that you can take with you on the way out if you feel like you need to do that. Um, so we're taking a lot of safety precautions. But the biggest safety precaution that we need to take is really social distancing. If we can maintain social distancing, then 90% of our chance of to catch anything um, is minimized and really mitigated. And so um, that's where you guys are gonna be so vital and so important over these next eight weeks. Um, we've actually added a couple spots uh, in the greeter ministry that we don't normally have. Um, and we've got some very specific jobs for very specific roles. Um, so that's sort of what this meeting was to do tonight, was to explain all of that um, and then let Lisa uh, explain how she's going to implement all of that um, and then let you guys give feedback on that. Okay? So... Essentially, here's the spots that we have for greeter ministry for the next eight weeks or so. Uh, we're going to have somebody in the parking lot parking cars uh, because we're not going to park cars side by side by side by side. We're essentially going to park cars with a, a space of a car in between. So we're going to social distance so that if 
you get out of your driver's side and somebody gets out of their passenger side, there's enough distance there. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some banners up, some signs up about social distancing uh, in the parking lot and that kind of thing. We need two people uh, who are gonna be the only two people that touch the doors as far as opening them uh, for folks. Um, and so we need those people to be very dedicated and stay in that spot um, and open the door whether somebody's going in or somebody's coming out. Um, either way, um, inside the door, we will have uh, some ushers, so to speak, that will sort of point people to where we need them to sit. And that's all based on family size um, and, and so forth. Um, it's sort of like playing a huge game of Tetris uh, to try to maximize the seats that we have. We have 100 seats in there. If we can really maximize it, we probably could get 50 people in each of the services. And so that's sort of our target. That's why we're having two services. That's why we're going to have people. There's, you know, there's, if a family of four comes in, they're easy to set because you can set them on either side and not lose any chairs. Um, if you have a family of five or six come in, that isn't as bad because you can set them in the middle and not lose any chairs. Uh, but when people come in as ones, twos, and threes, hey, Caden, uh, when they come in as one, twos, and threes, those are the ones you have to sort of place like a Tetris block to maximize the spots that you might lose. Um, and then we're going to have somebody sort of be the bathroom attendant. Uh, they're not going to go into the bathroom with people, but they're going to stand back there and if somebody has to go, when they come back out, they're going to go in and spray down the handles uh, on the sink um, and that kind of stuff. And then in between services, uh, the band is actually going to undertake um, uh, sanitizing, um, any, you know, anything we need to sanitize inside in between the two services. Uh, the services are, the doors are going to open 15 minutes before the service starts. So hopefully people will show up. We've encouraged them to bring their own breakfast, bring their own coffee. Hopefully some people will be sort of mingling in the parking lot talking. And we want to encourage that. We just want to, you know, we want them to maintain social distancing. But, you know, if people need to plop down the tailgate on their truck and hop up with a biscuit or a donut or a coffee, and can all just sort of talk and maintain social distancing, uh, that's certainly an opportunity we haven't had in about 10 weeks. So, and then once the doors open, of course the door readers would open the doors, people would come in by family groups. Let me just explain that. So like I say, if, you get, if, you get, if you're one of the ushers, you're gonna to wanna to know that, but like a family group is if somebody lives with you or they came to church with you. Uh, the one person that jumps in my head is Kaylee that comes with the Dukes about every week. If she's rode, already rode from her house to the church with them, then obviously it's okay that she sat with them during church. Madison uh, that comes with Ashley's son would be the same way. So if they ride with you to church, then they are part of your family in, in this idea of where to set people and those kinds of things. Um, so that's sort of the broad overview. Uh, let me just stop there and see if that brought up any questions on your end. Yeah. I, so like Angie, will, if she doesn't ride with any of us, she sits by herself. Then my dad would sit by himself. We don't sit as they a family. Stay, they can sit with you because they are part of your family. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's not uh, coming yet. He's not ready to. Right. We ain't even seen him. We haven't right. had contact with him, so he's yeah. he's not ready to come out yet. Right. So and I think of our of our sixty and over crowd. There'll be just a few that are there, not many of them yet. Uh, but I think as we get into July, yeah, I think they'll start to. You know, it's going to be more of a trickle in process uh, for those people that we just encourage to take a little extra time before before they come back, so to speak. But yeah, if it's somebody that's your family, we know it's your family, 
that, that that's that's fine. Gotcha. Um, I was thinking just, um, I don't know how y'all feel about the parking, um, like touching other people's vehicles. Um, I don't know. That t That's just a, something I guess you, we would have to talk about, um, you know, getting in somebody else's steering wheel, making sure it's clean or whatever. Are you talking about driving their car? No, we're not doing oh, valet, like, valet parking. When you said that, I was like, we're doing the valet parking? No like, valet oh, parking. Step it up. <laughs> We're just I'm only going to have a winter park, Monica. Wow. First church to do valet parking. Well, wow. When you said we're going to park, on, I was like, oh my gosh, that is not good. <laughs> uh, just, there's, there's somebody in the parking lot that will sort of sort of be directing you in. Park okay, here. I just wanted to make sure. Here. The full service here. Here. Yeah. Uh, my other thing is, like, um, Lisa, and you may address this in a few minutes, is um, like when we come in, um, you know how like the grocery stores and Walmart has put tape down to where we're six feet apart. You know, I'm sure people are going to be anxious to get in, but it's going to, like you said, that's why I signed up for the door because I don't play that game. So <laughs> strategically placing people, you know, might be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, so trying to slow people down from coming in the church, I think might would be a good idea to have mm -hmm. like just markers as we hold the doors or open them, that there's markers, you know, like they do at the grocery store, just a piece of tape or something like that. I don't know. That was just a thought, you know, that came in to make sure people are, you know, six feet apart. Yeah, there probably should be one person sort of hold, like, come inside the doors, but there's one person sort of holding you, and then there's an usher on each aisle, you know, and, and so the, the one person, you know, if, if it was me, I could say, you know, I got four here. At least I might be on one side. Go, yeah, send them my way. I'll put them on that row there. Uh, we are going to skip every other row. So, if you put, yeah, so my idea was we use the first, third, fifth, and seventh rows on the sides, second, fourth, and sixth rows in the middle. Uh, so, if you have, you know, if somebody goes, I got a family of four, yeah, they go, they can go right here. Hey, I got a family of five. And they can go right here. Like I say, the difficult part in that job is going to be when you have ones and twos trying to figure it because you have to have at least two seats, probably three seats in between. Yeah, so that was my question. Second, is, that was my question is how many between if you have one or twos, how many well, seats between? This is going to sound sort of weird. The smaller the person, the fewer the seats. So let's say – uh, somebody came in with their third grader, you might only need two seats in between the next family that sits down because that third grader is smaller. They're not going to reach. But if you have, you know, if you and Brad came in and sat down on this end and two yeah. other adults came in and sat down, really it's probably going to be three seats is what you're going to need in the middle. So okay. that middle section only has six chairs. So you know, twos, ones, twos and twos. That's going to be the, that's going to be the hard part. It, it really is. Um, and again, not knowing, I, I put a poll up on Facebook trying to get people to respond with so that we would have an idea of, Hey, this family's coming, that family's coming. And we would sort of know some of the family sizes, but nobody's really responded on that poll. Uh, other than yeah. the people who are going to be there for both services. I think so, I put 11, but we may be there at 9, because I think Angela said Dad wants to come at 9, so yeah, the early okay. one. So we may uh, actually be there at the 9 instead of 11. And how many people are we letting in the church? Like, is there going to be a cutoff of, like, 50 people? When the, seats, when the seats are done. Go to your seat, go to your car. Well, we could, <laughs> we can, you know, like we do in a big event where we take those plastic chairs and set up another row or two. Uh, we could do that if we have to, because we could still maintain social distancing. Um, but then that's after everything else has got used up, because you can't you can't sit somebody on that back row and then all these other people go walking by them and stuff. Is there a way we can like uh, keep space between the rows so we can maximize the actual seats? That's what I was thinking too. Explain that. Like space out the rows. But actually, don't you know use the seats, but space them out far, far enough that there's space far enough. 
instead of skipping the rows and not being able to use those seats. So space the rows six feet apart. Yeah, is what she's saying. Everything. I don't think I don't think there's enough room there to okay. do. You might could do a row or two that way. You might could take the front row and move it up, but I don't think you're going to get because there's seven there's seven rows. Okay. So to, to to put six foot in between all seven rows, you can't you can't okay. do that. I was just kidding. Uh, I had thought about that too because I thought there's extra space we're not using. Um, but then you're eventually gonna run out of space too, you know. Um what other questions does mm -hmm. all of that bring up? A lot of this is based off of uh, the elders meeting that we had and some recommendations we've gotten from the Southern Baptist Convention and some input that we got, not input, but uh, other churches who've already done this and walked through all these steps. I watched several webinars, uh, what those people were saying. Um, so that's where most of this, it wasn't, it wasn't all thought up in my head. That's where most of this came came from most of these guidelines and stuff so how early do you want them to be there because you're going to open the doors 15 minutes ahead of time what time do you so, want them there yeah doors are going to open at 8 45 i would say if you're there by 8 30 because there again you're not coming in to get breakfast right <laughs> you know, a lot of times you get there in time to get your breakfast before you get to your <laughs> so you know you're not going inside to get your breakfast or whatever uh so i would say 8 30 would be uh, would be great, and especially if everybody already knows. Here's our. Here's my role. I'm going here, 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 here. You know, and, I, and that's what Lisa's going to do is scheduling everybody and letting them know um, what what their responsibility okay. is, I guess, uh, for the day. Um, in between the two services, the doors will be locked back again um, for the same thing to to spray down stuff. Uh, and I guess, you know, in the, the first few weeks, we may actually do overkill. Like, we may spray things down, or even you'll say, that's a lot of spray. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of disinfectant, you know. Lysol spray going to be getting there, buddy. <laughs> that's right. Buy stock in Lysol. Well, <laughs> it's not Lysol spray. It's a um, spray that we from a, um, a friend of ours that yeah. kills like 99.9 .9 and it's not a it's not a fragrant mm. um type spray um so it can lay on surfaces and you know not be poisonous and things like that so it's from a it's from a chemical company that we have they own it in virginia and so we knew that they had it so we ordered um some chemical from them that you can spray like on the, the nursery toys and things like that when they start coming back that kills germs you know that daycares and doctor's offices and places like that use it it's a commercial product type thing. So, what a uh what a, i had to i'm sorry go ahead i was gonna ask any other questions oh uh, i just thought of something all right so when service is over what are we how are or will we help send everybody out on individually or? Where we essentially are going to actually, we're not going to do it as strict as some places have done it, but somebody will come up, me probably the first week after the last song, and we're going to just explain how we want you to leave. So for instance, we want the people on the very back row to leave first. And so we want to, just as everybody came in and we're seating them from front to back, we want everybody to leave from back to front. Okay. And we're just going to explain that at the end of both services for the first couple of weeks, I guess, probably till everybody gets in the hang of it. Uh, we're going to encourage them. Same thing. If you want a fellowship, do that out in the parking lot, you know, not in here um, because we're going to be disinfecting and getting everything ready for the second service. Um, so, and then and, and, I, and the greeters would be more welcome to, to stand inside. You don't have to go back outside and stand for a whole hour while you're waiting. But, um, you know, but there again, at 1030, be back out at your post as people start coming for the 11 o'clock service. Um, we've got some signs that say, welcome back. We're glad you're here. Uh, we've got, 
one that, that it talks about social distancing and it sort of explains it and, and that kind of thing. So we'll have some things that are sort of put up uh, in the parking lot for folks. I'm going to ask the band and myself and whoever's there ultra early to park away uh, up the hill or something just to where, because they usually take up spots that are right there around the church and we want to free those spots up for, uh, for everybody who's coming. So we'll park away. So I mean, the back door. Yeah, the back door. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, no. I just asked you, we we're going to have that back door by the nursery lock so that people can only enter and exit through the main um, door. So that way there's not an extra person that has to be back there, um, you know, man in that position. Because obviously nobody will need to, you know, really go in and out that door um, other than maybe somebody working, you know. And, you know, initially, Lisa, I'm not, I'm not, I, I know you and I had a couple of conversations. Initially, you know, the actual greeters may do both services. But once we sort of ease into this, Lisa may have a, here's your nine o'clock greeters, here's your 11 o'clock greeters, you know. And, and if you greet the first service and you're in the first service and you greet the second service, I mean, you could leave at that point, I guess. Um, well, yeah, we wouldn't want the door people opening the doors, but, uh, but, uh, again, we'll tweak this as we go along. Uh, but the first couple of weeks will probably be very, it'll almost seem tedious. I believe it'll be like, why are we doing this? Why, you know, I think that's going to come up. And, but then I think, you know, as people just realize we're being over cautious to some degree, um, you know, I think it'll be okay. And then two, three weeks down the road, we may see, hey, we need to tweak this or change this, or the greeters are saying this, you know, and we may adjust it. Here, one of the thoughts uh, that the elders have had was that, you know, we were getting ready to go to two services on Easter Sunday before all of this madness hit. And if we had done that and everything had been normal, we would already be doing two services. So this may actually help us give us a reason for sort of test run in the two services. You know, we may find out that the first service is a way smaller crowd and the second service is still a lot bigger crowd. Uh, once the kids come back, we'll be able to see what kids are coming, you know, at nine o'clock with parents and families, what's, which families are coming at 11, you know, with their kids. And so it's really gonna give us about eight weeks to sort of see how our church may sift through this whole two services uh, thing. And it will allow the greeter ministry to sort of say this work, this didn't, uh, we need to tweak this. We need to totally change this. Um, you know, the, the things I'm saying today are not law. Um, they're just, again, things that we've gotten uh, from our convention about reopening their church and for churches that have already done it, uh, particularly places like out in Texas and places like that that have already been meeting for a couple of weeks. Um, so, so nothing is law, nothing is set in stone, nothing is sacred uh, when it comes to things that we might need to do. So feel free, you know, to give feedback to Lisa. Uh, she'll feel free to give feedback to me. Um, and, you know, we'll hopefully be honest with you. Hopefully when August gets here, our church is already in the mindset of two services and we could just pick up with school, you know, hopefully school gets back in in August and we can just pick up with two services full speed. Um, we may actually tweak the times when COVID isn't an issue. Uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, hopefully it'll get people just in the mindset and the habit of two. It's going to get, it's, we've got to get people back in the habit of even coming to church because uh, We've gotten used to waking up Sunday at 9.45, <laughs> hitting the button at 10 o'clock and having church, you know. So we've got to get people back in even the habit of coming. So, uh, so anyway. Other comments or thoughts, Lisa? What about the um, 
Like you want somebody, I'm assuming, to stay at the door maybe during the whole service, just in case somebody comes in late, uh, somebody needs to be there to man that door and, and be the person maybe to lock it at the appointed time? Yeah, uh, we're not gonna lock it while people are in the building, but just in between the two services, once everybody's okay. cleared out, we'll lock That's it. Right. When they clear then out. The second group just doesn't start walking in. That's right, yeah. I forgot we got plenty of time. Yeah, we do. We we have that's we do have a big gap in there, and some people and we may even find out that we don't need all that gap. We could have a smaller gap, and it would work just fine. But it is going to allow all the cars to get off the parking lot, so that all the next cars can park again closer. You know, instead of like on a normal Sunday where we're all the way up the hill and halfway down the hill type of thing. Right, but I'm guessing we still need somebody back there because people will come in late and somebody will need to help them get seated. So at least after the service, yeah. one person maybe kind of be manning that. Okay. Yeah, so, I think, uh, you know, if somebody's manning the door and one of your ushers is back there, so if somebody comes in and you've got to find out where to put them. Right. Uh, I, like, I, like, if, like if you and Jason were the ushers, you know, I would say wait until – maybe the after the welcome or something before you actually sit down or sit towards the back. Uh, like for instance, if it was your family doing it, you know, you, we could put three chairs on the, we could put five chairs on the back wall and y'all could sit back there as a family and maintain, you know, that as well. We could put those white chairs back there. Right. Uh, yeah. So we could do that. Okay. And so it might be good, Lisa, when you're scheduling, which I think you already do this, but to schedule families. So right. like if you schedule the McDaniels, and then you got Colby, Dakota, Kathy, Bobby, and then they can all still sit together as a family, but then they all could still, you know, Kim. And I mean, if you do people by families that you can, uh, that allows them to still sit together. That allows us actually like for your family, five extra seats. Right. We stick chairs on the back row, uh, on the back wall for your family in that on that day. So that actually gives us five extra seats right. if you schedule it that way. So, so that's good. Okay. A good thought. Hey, I had. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. We we got you, Major Tom. All right. Just break a break on nine. Radio check. <laughs> Come on back now. So he needs to be hey. parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parking lot, hey, you. I made you to move six feet to the left. Thank you. And uh, I may have missed it when I went to go get the headset, but did we talk masks? Are we wearing masks? Masks are optional. Uh, if you have one and you want to wear one, bring it. Uh, okay. I do have about 100 uh, of the cheaper masks that are going to be available. If somebody you know, needs one, they okay. can take one. Um, but like I have one, I don't wear it, but I have one. But if I felt like I needed it, I would just bring my own and wear it. And that's sort of what I said today in the devotional. If you have one and you want to bring it, wear it, do so. Uh, there'll be a few that are available for you to take and have. Uh, but we don't have enough to do eight weeks for everybody to grab right. a mask. For eight weeks. Yeah, that's a yearly budget right there. Exactly. Those things are expensive. Um, and the second question is, and I know we talked about this during staff meeting, uh, what if more people come than we can fit? That's going to be a problem. <laughs> and, and, be and, quite honest, and do we, what honest? are the preliminary numbers from your poll, I guess, is the other question. Well, I, the last I checked, there had been very few people respond to the poll. Okay. Uh, I, I need to probably try to post it again, maybe tomorrow and see if more people will respond to it. Um, now, Mr. Clower has offered his house uh, if the people wanted to go down there and watch it on his TV. Uh, he's offered that as an option. Um, well, I mean, I imagine if you had to, uh, if a family showed up late and we were out of seats in the worship center, if they wanted, you could take them up to uh, the kid, the kid building, the elementary building, maybe because there's a. You could do Facebook on there type of thing. I mean, 
that isn't really a good idea. I don't think that's going to be optimal, yeah. but but that's really, you know. Uh, Ida, in the hospitality area, is there that TV still there too? That you could possibly that, that, that TV is there, uh -huh. but it is not. Uh, although I guess we could take a TV out of one of the other buildings that is a smart TV and replace that TV with it to where you could get on Facebook back in the hospitality area. I mean, that yeah, and, switching the TVs would be and, and yeah, we could do that. Or I think I have a fire stick that I can put in uh, the back of that. If it has a USB port, which I imagine it does. It does. I yeah, can put that fire. I can put that. No, it's HDMI. Sorry. Uh, put it in the HDMI, and then I just have to connect that to the Wi-Fi, and then you can Facebook Live from there. Um, right. I have to find my fire stick and see if that's an option. And that could be. I mean, that would be room for. We could use those white yeah. chairs. You could do four, eight, maybe twelve extra people back there if we had to. Um, and there again, just remember. I think one thing that's going to be hard for our people to adjust to is what you've been watching on Sunday is not going to be the same thing that you're watching on Facebook this Sunday. What you're going to watch this Sunday is going back to the way it was before we did the COVID stuff and we pre-recorded. And so, you know, the video quality isn't great. It looks far off no matter how much you try to zoom it in. It still looks at a distance. Um, but it is something, to be quite honest with you. In fact, what I'm sort of hoping is that the first weeks of people are going to say, well, let's just watch it online. And they're going to be like, this isn't that good. Next week, I think we're going. I'm almost hoping it'll drive people back to church. Um, like I say, because what we've been doing has been pre-recorded, you know, synced up, video quality, all that kind of stuff where the Mevo isn't, isn't necessarily going to do all of that. What if you have somebody that doesn't want to social distance? I mean. Uh, <laughs> you could direct them to me uh, or Lisa. Direct them to Lisa. <laughs> like, oh, thanks. <laughs> direct them to Lisa and then we'll Lisa can Monica. direct them to me. Yeah, Monica's good. Listen <laughs> we'll send them to Monica. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <wasn't> <laughs> I said that's a compliment. Yeah. It is. We'll, we'll sit them in the baptistry. I wish I could be direct. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, there's not a lot of options. So, really, they come in. If we get the hospitality area done, then you could just say, if you don't want to social distance, then you have to go to this room or you have to do, you know, you have to get leave. I mean, because these are, I mean, it's not like these are our guidelines. I mean, we're just adhering to the guidelines that was put out for us to right. do this. So, you know, I think if you approach it that these are the guidelines that the CDC, the government, and who we associate with our church, you know, put out in order for us to come back, then, you know, we want to be good stewards and good Christians, and we want to follow these rules and still be safe and, you know, smart. So... That's how diplomatic I would put it. <laughs> yep. So going to Monica. Good job. That's you just sold right. it. <laughs> hey, great. Thanks. I said, go back and get in your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think we'll have a big issue with our members. I think the only by you know if, if a guest came, you know they may not understand. They may not have heard all of our announcements, our videos. So they may walk in not under even understanding what we're doing. Um, and that's one thing I would say is uh, whoever's out in the parking lot, whether you're an actual greeter that week or you're just out in the parking lot waiting on church yourself, if we see a guest, you know, we need to walk as close as we can get to them and introduce ourselves and maybe even explain ahead of time. Say, look, we know it's going to sound a little crazy when you get ready to go into the church, but, you know, they're setting people and blah, 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 blah. And... You know, so it's going to be an awesome service. We, we hope you're going to be excited about being here. But we just want you to know it's not like normal when you just walk in and you get coffee and you sit wherever you want. But I don't think people's going to expect that. that because it's not like it's just a Georgia, Perry, right. pandemic 
I mean, it's a worldwide pandemic. So they've been sheltered. They've heard everything. So they may not be totally familiar with, like, they might be, I think they might be more concerned about, oh, how are we going to social distance when we go in versus I don't want to or on the flip side. I think they might be more concerned with how are they going to keep me safe because I've wanted to come and be here. Um, I, to me, that's what I think because I, I don't think there's people that don't know what's going on out there and right. don't know that churches, you know, are just beginning to open. So They just may not know what we're doing. And we so, have had I will tell you, we have had a lot of people who don't go to our church watching our services online. And and sometimes you will, you know, some people will go, hey, let's go check that church out. Uh, we've been watching them for the last few weeks or, or whatever. So, you know, I don't think we're going to be flooded with guests initially, but uh, you may actually find some guests. And if you talk to them, you'll find out, yeah, we were watching, you know, we're doing your stuff online. So we just decided to come and check it out. So if somebody comes with a child, um, somebody that would be in nursery age, and they say, well, can I go back to the nursery with my child? As long as they're the only ones back there, that's that's okay. But you have another person that comes with a child, that's eh, not really okay, right? Right. Um, the, way, the way one person said it was you sort of make your nursery self-serve. Like it's there. If you came and you have a baby and the baby needs to be changed, you go change your baby. Uh, but nobody mans the nursery. Okay. You know, nobody is doing that. Um, it's not like we can open it or close it for just one person either. I, mean, I, I think right. if, if they bring, yeah, okay. If they bring somebody, I think you have to let them know that, that we have not opened our church to children under third grade. So there could be the potential if someone else comes in, they may need to use that facility as well. Right. Yeah. And, and again, we want to explain that we've, we've made those guidelines just for the safety of their children. You right. know, it's not even for their mother's safety or the dad's safety. It's really for the safety of that baby. Um, so. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? I don't know. Y'all may have said it, but how many? So there's two people at the door. I'm guessing two in the parking lot, or more than two. Right. And then two in the park. Two in the parking lot. Two at the doors. A person inside the door, sort of wait, getting people to wait. Uh, if you have an usher in each aisle, and then one of the ushers could actually be the bathroom person once service starts. Well, Marissa's doing the bathroom this Sunday. She volunteered to be the bathroom person um, to clean, I guess, that and do that. So, um, isn't that right, Lisa, that Marissa volunteered to be the bathroom greeter? I've got Marissa for the bathroom and then you for the door so far. And I mean, other people have told me they were willing to do but I just wanted to kind of get a little feedback. I don't know if y'all talked about it. Sorry, we kind of have a little family emergency going on. But um, anyway, if y'all were talking about wanting to do one or both services, I kind of wanted to get some feedback from y'all and what y'all thought about that. Um, if you think it'd be doable to do both for now, um, that might be the easiest option. But if y'all don't think so, or want to do it on an individual basis, like, you know, you're not able to do it, but one, ser one service, that's fine. But y'all tell me what you think. Have you got more people that's volunteered to help? Not really. Um, Sunday, and, yeah. This Sunday. I figured like a lot of the teachers that help in the other grades have smaller kids, so uh -huh. they probably won't yeah. be able to come anyway. Yeah, that was the only thing about that was a lot of them have younger children, you know, yeah. they're not wanting to come, you know, which I don't blame them. So, right. Um, but a lot of my, you know, the teachers are also greeters already too. So, you know, yeah. Like you're talking about you know, yeah. some of y'all that already serve, you know, and then I have had some people tell me they're not ready to come back. So I've had a few tell me that uh, I had a few emails today, you know, a couple of people that said that they, you know, and I understand, you know, that that's, um, you know, something that a lot of people are not going to be able to So Right. Um, 
So how do y'all feel about doing two services or y'all feel like one is, is going to be about the max? Or do y'all just want to email me and let me know and it won't put you on the spot and you're not recorded? <laughs> <It's a> record. <laughs> I, know, can, I can do both because I'll probably be there essentially for both. Um, and I would say maybe as like as the Sundays start counting down that like Lord and Lisa, people that work with me and Dr. Stewart, those might be people that maybe they just for whatever reason forgot, didn't see it or was unaware um, that may want to join, you know, and be like, hey, yeah, we'll jump back in and help. Right. Um, um, so for me right now, um, I mean, eight weeks, you never know what's going to happen eight weeks down the road. Um, okay. Because like on the weekend that we have Hensley, who knows, Blake might get sick or something, you know, so you right. just never know. Right. Um, for right now, I can admit to both. Yeah. But, um, you know, hopefully there'll be more people as they see how things are going. Well, you know, that are on the list will jump back in and participate. Right. Right. Okay. So we can just leave it at that. Y'all just email me your thoughts about that. And then that way y'all don't have, you're not on the spot, you know, but, and if, if you're willing to do this coming up Sunday, just shoot me a text or an email. Y'all have all my information and let me know what you think. And then, you know, as we put this on YouTube, we may get more response too for the people that couldn't be here. Um, so that was one of the main things I want to get feedback on. Um, and if you know of anybody that might be willing to serve during this time that would normally be serving somewhere else, you know, just let me know. Um, and let's see on my list. Um, we've already answered that and that and that I think we pretty much covered and, um, I'll just get like this week. We'll make sure we get that covered first off and then I'll work on the next week. And just kind of see how things go and if we need to add more we can or whatever you know kind of see how many people we're actually going to need um yes. but anyway so i'll just kind of get feedback from whoever and and get because i think even like i told rick i said even if we don't get people that say they can do it this week we have to be there you know my family does this week for both services so you know we can do it if need be we can do both services but we do want to actually sit in the second service so <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Lisa, one of the things we did say when you went on for a second is we talked about the parking lot. And so we thought it'd be better to have two in the parking lot, okay. two at the doors, one inside the door, two ushers. So that's two, four, six, seven. Okay. Okay. And then the bathroom is eight. I think. <laughs> or, or if you're going out, or if you're saying. coming in. There's not right. going to be any people going out. They will at the end of the show. Okay, but not while you're trying to sit on. Hey. So you would need to except for the ushers. No, they're to, the door holders are going to have to hold the door while people are coming in. Okay, but then you said there was two more people and then leaks of the ushers. No, one other person that's sort of <laughs> holding people back or waiting for people to, for the ushers to see. No, because they're going to be holding the door. And they're going to be, these are people be 10 feet inside the door. Six foot, six feet. All right, 12 feet inside the door. <laughs> what about the bathroom? What all entails cleaning the bathroom? Yeah. I mean, are you talking just wiping the door? Wiping the door handles. handles the, the, you know, yeah, and then the, the door handles to the toilet. Or are you talking about the seat, uh, toilet seat and spraying? And, <laughs> and I don't have a problem with it. I was just asking in case the boys yeah. needed to help out in that area, what all that would mean for them to do. Anything, where you touch, <laughs> anything that you touch, like the doors, the, the flushing, the, uh, not many people put the seats down at church. Uh, I have noticed that even in the women's bathroom. <laughs> <What? laughs> um, they're always... Uh, so, <laughs> okay, I don't care. Uh, maybe I'll start putting <laughs> the seats down. <laughs> Rick's like, Why would you ever mess with the seat? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> So, Kathy, yes, the door handles, uh, probably white. And literally, you could take a Lysol wipe, and you're just going to wipe, and then the sink wipe fixture, sink down. the door handle. Yeah, just, just the stuff you would touch when you go in there. Okay. So, do you only let... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Do you only let one in at a time use the bathroom? I yeah, I, like if you're there and somebody's in there and somebody else is walking that way, just say, you know, you need to yeah. wait and somebody's in there. 
and I have okay. to I have to do my deal when they come out. <laughs> it's already such tight quarters anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I would. <laughs> And if somebody yeah, really wants to clean it themselves, you'd let them do that too, right? Because I think I'd be like, um, I don't want somebody coming up behind me doing that. You know, hey, give that to me. Are you good with that? Somebody doing it themselves? I'm okay with it because I'll be honest with you. Right. Me, myself, I wouldn't even worry about wiping everything. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm not <laughs> germophobic in that, in that aspect. But, yeah. um, you know, again, the idea to emphasize to people is, this isn't just for your safety, it's for everybody's safety. And so- well, And we don't have to publicize that. We can just say we're monitoring the bathroom to make sure there's only one in there at a time because the, the social distancing is not the appropriate distance. And then when they leave, you can just tell the next lady, um, let me run in and check real quick. And you can shut the door, right. wipe the knob off, shut the door, do what you need to and then open it and say okay it's ready i mean they'll get the hint of it but you know you don't have to go into great detail you can just say we're you know we're just doing social distancing one at a time right this one needs an extra spray that person has dirty hands in our bathrooms yeah it's one person at a time just just based on social distancing <laughs> it's sort of uncomfortable to be in there with somebody else actually yeah You're so close <laughs> so anything else anything lisa you need to convey all of you guys are going to let lisa know what you're up for and when you're available um and those of you like Kathy that represent families, just, you know, just realize that Lisa's probably going to play in your whole family at, the, at that time or whatever. So, so. all right. Sound good? Yep. yep. Thank y'all. All right. Lisa, call me if you need us. Okay. Y'all too. Right. And, and I, have, I have no idea. This thing says it's recording. I have no idea where this video is going to be, so it uh, I'll, I'll try to find it. Yeah, it's a media file. It'll be the little cone-shaped thing. You know what I'm talking about? It'll download as a little cone-shaped thing. And let you... <laughs> Call Cole. How about that? Huh? Yeah, you or I can give Cole my iPad to look at it and figure out where it went to. So Okay. It, is, is the file actually going to be in the Zoom app? Like It'll, part of the Zoom? When you go to close Zoom, <laughs> it'll ask if you want to save it, and you save it. Okay. So it'll give okay. you an option. Yeah, I'm sure it's in the Zoom app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll get I'll get Cole to cut all this part out that makes me look really ignorant. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Well, thank Bye. you guys Bye. for joining us. All right. And yeah. hope y'all have a great night. Y'all too. Bye. 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 See ya. See, See ya, Miss Lisa. Call us if you need anything. Appreciate it. Y'all just pray. I don't know what's going on right now. Fix and find out. Oh, okay. okay. Let me know. All right. See ya. All right. Bye. bye.